I went ahead and expanded the set quite a bit. Um, I added uh, another sheet of plywood, some bridges uh, to our original circle. As you can see, uh, the Christmas gnomes aren't supposed to stay there, but uh, they'll be put away here soon. Um, so I went ahead, I have two trains on here now, because um, we're going to come to a point where we're going to collect too many engines and cars and all that stuff and not enough room. So I went ahead and I added two of these track switches in here, one there and one over there. Now these are both manual switches, and they're easy to tell because they don't have power pins here. If they did, they'd have a little screw-ons like that on them so you can tell they're powered. They do still have a manual switch on the side of them, so you can switch them manually. I like these better because you can do that. So what I went ahead and did now is I installed our LED light here for this track and our LED light over there for this track. And what I did is I went ahead and deadened the track, meaning I replaced the pin here and the pin over here with a plastic pin like this. And that's fairly easy to do. You just pull the center pin out of the rail and replace it with a plastic one. Now the outside two rails are tied together through this plate on the bottom. So if you read across electrically, these are connected. The center one's insulated by a little cardboard style insulator, and it's all three, to keep these insulated. So by removing the center track, that train is now dead. That train is now isolated from the track as well. So what I did to reconnect those is using a power from the main track, which will still power up via this yellow LED, or there's another green LED down there. It's hard to see. I think I got something in the way. But uh, then I did that by using a simple on-off light switch. Then I went here and I used a three-way light switch for two positions. Uh, my wiring is very crude at this point, but I used a green wire to come into on-off switch, which would be in this case this switch, so it's either on or off from this main center rail. Then I put that into a three-way switch, which this switch can come only be in this position or this position, and those are connected to track let's call it A, track B. Um, so that eliminates both these tracks being on at the same time, um, which we don't want that because uh, they will crash into each other. So by putting in this first switch, I'm able to power down that circuit completely so neither train will have power on it. And that what allows us to do to actually go ahead and run a, a whole nother train on here. Now, to put the other trains on, we'd have to have another turn off um, to get this train off the track. So I'm just going to remove it for right now because we don't have another turn out. But now, you see with those switch st still off, I can power this train up. That yellow LED comes on. So depending on which train we want to run next, I can go ahead and turn my main power back on. Now when I power this up, depending on the position of this three-way switch, either the red light's going to turn on for this train, or the green light over there is going to turn on for this train. I, I don't know what position they're in right now, so I guess you should be a surprise. Um, now these track switches, these are set to the straight position. To bring one of the trains out on track, we're going to have to flip the manual switch. We 
You can power up one of the trains. Okay, it's that one. And we can bring this out onto our main rail. Now we definitely don't want to leave that curve. We need to put that back in a straight position of the train will this rail there. stop our train right in front of the switch. Go ahead and reverse the switch. We should be able to back our train onto, back to the dead track. Go ahead and shut it off. Now by flipping our three position switch back in the opposite direction, and I apologize for my crude wiring. I'm just doing this for now because I plan on tearing this down and doing another set up. We're going to switch our track back to the straight position. Now I can return this train over here to its curved position. Go ahead and power it up. You can also notice the green LED on. I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to the straight track or it'll just rail, and we can go ahead and run this train. Okay, now we have a disrailment. I went ahead and re-railed my train. Without having these tracks screwed down or anchored, they do move around quite a bit. Um, I don't have them, even though I had plywood to anchor them down to, I have not yet. I'm going to re-disassemble this and we'll move on for the next video. If you do have tracks that want to slide apart, pull, the, pull out from each other, they make these track clips that clip underneath and hold it together. I mean, those really work pretty well, um, but even at that, it ain't going to stop the train from wanting to push these tracks side to side. It's just going to happen until you anchor it down, which we'll talk about anchoring our tracks down a little bit later. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fire this train back up, and let's see if we can keep it on the rail this time. And when we're done working that circuit, we can just simply switch our track back, reverse our train onto that circuit. But at this point, we're going to go ahead and flip it straight again because we know which train we're going to run next. And we can go ahead and turn our main power off if we want to. And again, now neither train will light up. There's the track power. The red power's on or not on, the green power's not on. So that's a basic way to make your track a little more efficient to run more trains on a single track, um, especially to expand our track bigger. Um, we definitely don't want to do loops of track. We want to be able to turn tracks on, turn tracks off, bring certain trains out, and uh, make our track use of our space a lot more uh, convenient or a lot more useful, I guess. So if you have any comments, questions, leave a like. Um, tell me if I'm doing good. Tell me if I'm missing something. So uh, just because I do it doesn't mean you should. So, all right. Well, thank you for watching.